Hey, how's it going, everyone? David here, and welcome to another reaction. This episode, we are diving into The Walking Dead, season three, episode number 11, called I Ain't a Judas. That sounds like something Daryl will say, so I won't be shocked that that's why it's called that, because some way, shape, and form, Daryl mentions it. But I could be completely wrong. Anyways, last episode was crazy. Obviously, Axel going down, big shootout going down with Governor. A lot went down in the in the last episode, so I'm expecting some sort of, I wouldn't say a slower episode, but definitely another story builder towards what we're going to do next. But really, to be honest with you, season three has been nothing, nothing short of amazing. It has not been slow by any means. So even if this that last episode was such a big deal, this this episode might do the same exact thing. So it won't surprise me, but don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, head on over to Patreon for the full uncut unedited reactions over there episodes extra early over there as well with that being said guys buckle your seatbelts let's ride ain't a judas we're not leaving we can't stay here what if there's Dude, another Rick. stopper a wood pallet won't stop one of those right but he's got the guns and the numbers and if he takes the high ground around this place shoot he could just starve us out if he wanted to If there's someone to do something the right way, be Rick. I just don't know how many people we lose. Come on, it can't be the Lori thing again. They deserve a rest. He really only came out there to tell him that. He's got a point, though, Rick. Bad enough, we got biters at our gates. We can't have aggressors just miles away. So you went and welcomed them to the neighborhood? You know they shot at us. I don't know who these people were when you were with them, but they changed. They're bloodthirsty. Oh my God. You knew about this? Stay there. Stay there. Wow. Does that not show what he feels like how he feels about you? I wonder if it's gonna come down to a decision between the old group or this group for her. He tried to kill you. Merrill has military experience. He may be erratic, but don't underestimate his loyalty to his brother. What if we sell both problems at once? Deliver Merle to the governor. Bargaining chip. Give him his traitor. Maybe declare a truce. Dude, you don't, man, the governor don't want Merle. They never met before. We'll find another way you can help us. This is pointless. No this one's is asthmatic. Completely pointless. He's your brother, but he's not good for you. Don't let him bring you down. After all, look how far you've come. <laughs> I feel like there's such a relationship brewing between them. At least that I want one with between them. Talk to Rick. This is a betrayal. No. It's an attempt to stop this before more people get killed. You can do this, Milton. No, he can't. Dude, this is the word. Like, no. He left. Oh, he's already talking. Look at Milton out here with the tapes around his his forearms. What's his head? Close it down. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Oh trying. my god! You gotta stop it. Anyway, hope we can get past it. 
Let bygones be bygones. Can't even try. Like, can anyone trust Murrow though? Like the way he talks, just seems so like it's a diversionary tactic. Lying. Don't take a shot. Am I gonna see you? There's one person that'll take a shot. The homie Carl. Nah, see, that's too close to me. Oh, there you go. That's too close. All right, let's hear what she got to say. Get up. It's a conversation that needs to be had. People are terrified. They see you as killers. They're training to attack. I'll tell you what. Next time you see Philip, tell him to take his other eye. We've taken too much shit for too long. He wants a war. He's got one. All right? Be a lot of death. If There's going to be a lot. And try to work. That's why I went back to Woodbury. Exposed him for what he is. I knew that it would hurt you. Why are you in such denial? Can you describe the layout? Oh, God, this Pretty isn't good. Confusing, but I, I could try. We get you rest. We can talk about it tomorrow. Now they have the inside you scoop. You're welcome to stay here as long as you like, but you take the knife. Got the inside we'll scoop. You need to sleep with him. Give him the greatest night of his life. Get him to drop his guard, then when he's sleeping, you can end this. Oh. <laughs> Whoa. That is just, uh, out there. Too. Something's gonna happen to Andrea. There's still gonna be a war. Something has to. Something has to happen. I think you still want to close that fence over there? For someone who snuck out, you sure as shit didn't want to come sneaking back in. You're coming through the front gate. That wasn't smart of you. Yes. Break. Do you know about Rick? Yes. Do you know about Rick? I can imagine making out with somebody. No toothpaste, no nothing. Some reunion, huh? She's in the jam. We all are. Andrea's persuasive. This fellow's arm to the teeth. Been on destruction. You hold it down here. Got it. When there's nothing left to keep you here. When you're falling behind this big blue world. You got a I kind of figured it'd be an episode like this. Present started sweet. The last thing they're gonna show is her sleeping with him. I know it. He's gonna sit up behind her. It's gonna be that classic cliche grab the hand before she goes to do it. Not even. That's her decision right there. That's her decision right there. Walking away like that. All right. Season three, episode number 11 of The Walking Dead. I knew it. I, I, I kind of had the sense coming into this episode. Don't get me wrong. This is a really good episode. This is a really good episode. High eight, low nine for me. I knew coming into this episode, however... That it was going to be a setup. It was going to be a setup. 
into the next episode. Because what, what had happened in the previous episode was so out there. It was so, it was a big moment. Axel death, you know, the governor making the first sort of attack on the prison. I knew that that was such a big moment that this one had to follow it up with a lot of, you know, talk, a lot of planning, a lot of, you know, what's going to happen next. And that's exactly what we got. But it was just done in such a great way where to me, it's a really good episode. It's a really good episode. And so I knew coming into it, it was going to be that. And I got exactly what I thought it was going to be. But what I was worried about that it was going to be a slow episode. I was like, ah, you know, it might be a lot of dialogue. It might be, you know, very slow. And it wasn't by any means. It was definitely not a slow episode. It was a, a, a very, in a sense, thrilling, like what they were talking about and the planning that was going on. And, you know, to me, it wasn't. It wasn't anything short of amazing, and so uh, definitely enjoyed this episode. I liked it from the standpoint of the fear that that both sides are showing, but the relentlessness and the the sort of won't give up attitude that both sides are showing as well. Uh, the governor is a screwed up man. He's a screwed up individual, and the fact that Andrea really can't see it bothers the crap out of me. At least she doesn't see it in the actual state. That it really is like he's legit a bad dude. He's 100% a bad dude. And so she doesn't really see it as that. She sees it as like someone who I don't know is going through something, I guess. But to, to, to I guess if I can put them side by side, obviously we're following our group in the prison. So I'm going to side with them regardless. But to put them side by side, Rick and the governor, both are going through some difficult times, to say the least. The governor lost, uh, you know, someone that she was, he was hoping that Milton could, you know, bring back to him. Rick obviously losing Lori. So they're both going through some sort of despair, I guess you can say. So both are very unsteady, like Andrea said. Both are very uh, unpredictable at this moment because you don't know what's really going through their mind. You just know they're going through this agony and they're trying to deal with it. Both are very strong leaders. Both know the circumstances that are laid out in front of them. And so they're kind of just like, Rick won't back down. Governor doesn't like the the fact that there's a threat in his front yard. And so it's like this it's like this ongoing battle and I, and and for some reason early on I didn't think it would flow very well where I was like ah you know I really enjoy looking at our group and watching our group that when we jump to Woodbury I get bummed that hasn't been the case I thought that was going to be the case it hasn't been the case like it's it's been very enjoyable watching both groups sort of do what they have to to uh go about this situation in their eyes the right way And so, you know, the governor's literally recruiting children and and older, you know, women and and, and all this crazy stuff. It doesn't matter. As long as you're breathing, you're joining our army. And so it's a really messed up way to go about it. But I guess on the other hand, you know, since our group is so, you know, small, we're doing the exact same thing because obviously Carol's fighting. Uh, you know, all the kids are trained over there as well. So it's one of those, like, I'm going to side with our group, of course, but it's crazy. It's one of those situations that's just not going to end well. I thought for sure there was going to be a moment at the end there where Andrea goes to go, you know, end it. And then he grabs her hand and then, you know, either kills her or, you know, locks her away. That wasn't the case. I'm sure either. I mean, to me, that was a decision made by Andrea that she is full team governor and she is no longer, you know, a part of our group. And so for that, I just, I don't think she's living very long. Personally, I don't think the governor trusts her. I think he's using her. I don't think she's in it for much longer, but that's just me. But nonetheless, this episode was a really great one. A lot of fun. And it was just dialogue, which is crazy. The other thing that kind of worries me is that Tyree and Sasha are, on the 
the Woodbury side because I thought they were really good people to have and they, they seem very sincere. Not so much the other two, but at least those two, they seem sincere. They seem like they really wanted to help out. And so the fact that Rick turned them away is a really, it's a huge bummer. It's a huge loss to me. And so they know the plans. They know the layout of the prison. That's another like step up, like a, another sort of thing that the governor has on our group. And so it's going to be, it's going to be interesting. I think this next episode, if it doesn't start off crazy, I think towards the end of the episode, it'll get crazy because it's just, how many more do we have? I think it's 16 per, yeah, 16 per. Something's about to happen pretty soon. You know it, you know, there's going to be a war pretty soon. I don't know if it's the next episode, but it'll definitely start something in the next episode. But anyways, this episode was a really good one. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, head on over to Patreon for the full uncut unedited reactions over there episodes extra early over there as well with that being said i'll catch you guys later bees guys